Hi, everyone, and welcome to CollaborWalkie, Modus Cooperandi and Modus Institute's conversation series about collaboration and humane work. I'm Tony Anzi Maria, and as usual, I am joined by my co host and partner at Modus Cooperandi, Jim Benson. Hi there. We are thrilled to have on our show today someone we've worked with, broken bread with, and respect immensely. Please join us in welcoming David Marlowe. Hi, excited to be here. So David, you have an interesting background. Perhaps you can tell us how a former Marine and a strategy executive finds his way to becoming the Ikigai guy. Yeah, yeah. So it, um, uh, let's, let's go back just a few years. And um, uh, I, I could see that my career was not going to end the way I'd originally planned. You know, companies, companies change, cultures changed. And so I, I started uh, just getting on LinkedIn because the worst, worst time to want to connect with people and network is when you're out of work. <laughs> so, so I thought, well, you know, about five or six years ago, I, and I just started writing, just started writing what, you know, was on my mind, what, what I was thinking about, what I thought was, was valuable to people. And in the course of that, it was really a, a, a representation of me because it wasn't an agenda or anything like that. And so I asked some folks, uh, yourselves included, uh, what was what was I projecting? What was the brand that was coming across? Because that, again, it was me. And one guy uh, that I talked with said, I don't know about your brand, but you ought to look into Ikigai. And I said, well, what's Ikigai? He said, ah, just look into it, just look into it. So, so I dug into it and what I found was a direct connection to all of the all of the work I had done over the years in, in the various, uh, as, as you said, the various kinds of work I've done, the th there was a thread of the time I was most satisfied, that I was the most effective, that I was having the, the best impact. And I was able to put a name to it, and that is Ikigai. Um, and that's what led me to, to that. And what's cool about it is, um, I'll actually share my entire, my entire, um, uh, career path because it'll be even more unusual and reinforce the idea that that ikigai is that deep interpersonal re representation of you as opposed to uh, a profession so i started uh years ago i mean i was 16 years old i was in uh, commercial radio not like a school radio station like a real radio station uh, as a disc jockey and then i moved into news and uh, did some tv news mostly radio though with this face i needed to be in radio more often than than on TV. Um, and um, that world is so crazy that I joined the Marines for a, a more sane life, if that tells you anything about that business at all. <laughs> um, left, the, uh, left the Marine Corps, got into engineering, um, was in uh, radio frequency engineering because I worked on radar and radar jamming in the Marine Corps, then transitioned into IT. I uh, was with G for a number of years and um, the uh, I still remember this boss I had saying, uh, you know, I think this internet thing may turn out to be something. We should probably start a team. And so I helped create an IT team and became an IT engineer. And then, as you said, moved into executive leadership and then eventually into uh, uh, corporate transformation work and things. But again, throughout all of that, and I'll throw in uh, coaching my daughter's eighth grade basketball team to like a national championship uh, level, sixth, sixth place in a national championship. All of those things had those same elements that really jazzed me and helped me uh, be what I believe I was created to be. And in those moments, uh, I was the most fulfilled. And so um, when my career uh, began to change, uh, I, I, uh, I got an opportunity to retire early. Um, and the really cool thing about it was because I understood my Ikigai at its deep level, I knew they, they offered me another role. So they did away with my, my uh, entire department was eliminated and uh, very gracious. I mean, they came to me and offered me another role. And I just knew that wouldn't be where my heart would be. That particular role wasn't where I could live out as much of my Ikigai as possible. And so I turned that down and started my own consulting and, uh, and, uh, coaching business, Blue Roo, right behind me here. Um, and that's kind of how I came to, to Ikigai. For, for those who might not have a familiarity with Ikigai, how would you explain it? Um, so Ikigai is a Japanese combination word that literally means life purpose. And 
ikigai is your reason for getting up in the morning uh, that that purpose that unique expression of you your gifts your passions your skills your experiences your opportunity to impact the world and when you're living your ikigai you're spending your time doing what only you can uniquely do again it's that special combination of everything that is you right your personality your interests and then it's it's understanding that to a level and then becoming the best in the world at it which is it being yourself and the great thing about ikigai once once you've got a sense for that it becomes core to your essence to your being to your doing and it's it's like a north star like a guide and incredible things start to fall in place for you um your natural reef you have a naturally sorry <clears throat> excuse me you have a a reframe for your focus and your energy and that happens naturally and doors begin to open where you didn't even know it existed is it a concept only embraced by the individual is it something that teams can apply or embrace or organizations yeah so um the the really cool thing i found about it is it's at a at a personal level for but it can also be at a company level. So what I do in my coaching and my consulting work is I help individuals find it and find that fulfillment in living into it. Then I help businesses identify their purpose and bring that into their products and into their people. And I know both of, of you are, are uh, wonderful, wonderful leaders and thought leaders in the continuous improvement work. And what I have found is and when you add Ikigai into that, you really uh, multiply the benefits of any kind of transformation work. So let me give you an example. <clears throat> in, um, uh, I'll just say a company that I worked with, um, they're in life insurance. We'll call them Acme Life Insurance. How's that? There might, there might be an Acme Life Insurance. I don't know, but we'll just pretend, okay? And um, they were headlong into, and I was, I was leading a transformation effort there and doing all the right things in an area of, um, interestingly called death benefits. So as you have life insurance, you have a benefit, there's death benefits. Um, and uh, they were all about improving that process, speeding it up, getting the money to, to the beneficiaries, right? Someone's lost a loved one. They've, they've uh, got a life insurance policy for all the right reasons. Now you want to get it to them as fast as you can, right? Well, what we found out was when we, when we dug deeper and when we connected it more to purpose, the team's purpose they thought was speeding that up. In reality, what, what the clients needed was to have less burden placed on them at a really tough time. And everything we were doing to speed up the process was putting more burden on the clients. And so there was a mismatch there. So again, they did all the right things all, for all the right reasons getting rid of waste, all of the things, wasn't really connected to the purpose of that team. So when you have a company purpose, which this company had a very solid understanding of their, their broader purpose, but none of the departments saw a connection, a direct connection to that purpose in their day-to-day -day activity. They just looked at the operational accountabilities they had. So when you can connect that, now you've got that from a company standpoint, and that supercharges right your your continuous improvement efforts and if you can link that then and support your employees in working in that same way right in living out their ikigai and the work that they're doing man you just get a win-win all the way around what i like about that um that story is that they couldn't find their purpose without finding out what the customer need actually was and customers, especially customers in a life insurance situation, often don't have a lot of opportunities to just call up the company and say, hey, let me tell you about my needs. <laughs> because they don't know their needs until it's too late. And then they're like, oh, crap, those are my needs. And you, you are, you aren't meeting them. So, um, so th it seems to me that whether it's for the individual or a team or a company or what have you, you have a, an entity and that entity has some, you know, purpose, some raison d'etre. And in order for that purpose to have meaning, it has to be in relation to something else. So how am I making an impact? How am I helping? How am I furthering 
uh, something out there in, in life. And so that nature of the collaboration, I find really interesting. Yeah, you've got to be willing to commit to, to go deep and, and listen, right? Listen to the clients because, and even that, that insight was, was derived. No one has said it explicitly. It was more from conversations and things that we, we had. And we were very lucky that uh, we had several clients who had both Acme life insurance and um, come up with another one, <laughs> Acme junior life insurance. And we could compare the two and in listening to their experience, we we came up with and then did did further uh, investigation into a company that wasn't well known for maybe being as caring as acme right and yet the experience was more caring and that really smacked us right upside the head because it's like we're the caring ones we're the caring ones that's awesome uh, maybe not <laughs> <laughs> yeah so one thing about that too, Jim, it, uh, and I'll actually show you a little something here real quick. Um, uh, some of the, there's, a, there's some frameworks around Ikigai, some of which are, the, are what, if you Google it, you'll get a defi that definition that I shared earlier, at least around the, uh, the life purpose. And you'll also find a Venn diagram that I'll show you. So, um, this is this has become kind of the de facto definition of ikigai and those of us who who really practice it and and teach it uh will tell you it's it's not this is like um my grandson's played uh playing was playing t-ball all right he and he loved t-ball he's very good at t-ball his uh his dad played college baseball so he loves baseball um this year he moved up to coach's pitch so he went up another level and and T-ball provided that nice framework and foundation, um, but it's not the game of baseball. And this is not Ikigai. <laughs> However, <laughs> it, does, it does provide a nice framework for um, uh, understanding how you might apply it, how you might live it out. Um, I'll, I'll always coach uh, uh, my clients, especially the, the personal coaching, that it's not about your profession. This sort of focuses on your profession. Um, but as I, as I gave you the example, I was a disc jockey and a sergeant in the Marines and an engineer and all those things. And I was able to live out my e guy. It's clearly not about the profession. That's just a, a way that I could live into it and make a living. So um, this though does provide a nice diagnostic. So if you look at, at the VIN, it's you know, what you love, the intersection of what you love, what the world needs, what people are willing to pay for, and then what you're good at. And as a company, you can certainly use that. I mean, maybe we don't, maybe we know what we're, we're about in terms of our, our purpose. Maybe we have an idea or we've done that, that deeper dive, that empathy listening, where we understand what they need and what they're willing to pay for. Maybe we're not good enough at it yet ourselves. We got to build skills. Or maybe we have some mad skills in a particular area but we don't know how those might be applied. So we need to understand what the world needs. And so this becomes uh, a diagnostic for you. And then it can become, it's a, it's a great diagnostic for, um, for the individual as well. So I have a client um, who was a pastor and he uh, got, got, got cancer. And uh, although he survived, it was a very, very tough, uh, tough thing for him. And so he doesn't have the energy and the, the physical stamina to be a pastor full-time anymore but he's super interesting guy he's uh, a, a devout a devout follower of his faith right and he likes to read uh, novels about you know multi-dimensional travel and the real physics of of multi-universes and all these things right and so he um he started writing stories about that and just kind of combining them um so he he loved that he had an interest in it uh, he has sold a number of, of his books, so people are willing to pay for it. When we were working together, what we found, though, was he had, uh, he had a skill gap to really be able to live that out and do it right. His, his editing skills are not that great. He's a, very, he's a very good writer, but as you know, I mean, you're, you're an author, Jim. Jim Tony, yeah, you guys are authors, so uh, you know that writing a book is one thing. Writing a novel and dialogue, and that is a whole different thing, and so we identified by using this uh, a skill gap for him 
And so he, he actually hired the editing, but then he also had some training and stuff in, in dialogue and has done some really amazing things uh, with it. Um, but that's one of the, one of the tools that we use that, that applies both to the personal and to the, uh, to the professional space. You know, what struck me is we've all, we met in a lean environment working on a, a lean project. And what struck me was, obviously it's another Japanese concept and we were, we were working um, with continuous improvement, like you mentioned before in Kaizen and looking at the word Kaizen and then looking at Ikigai and then looking at the overlap, right? Um, when you're coaching somebody in Ikigai or with Ikigai, I don't know how I would frame that. Uh -huh. um, do you look at their current state and then look at their ideal state? Is that how you help them make the jump? Yes. Uh, I mean, as, as you pointed out, I mean, that's where, so I named my company Vluru uh, for versatile guru, because I, I, I'm not a, I'm not a lean guy. I'm not a Six Sigma guy. I'm not an Ikigai guy. Well, I am the Ikigai guy, but uh, beyond that, I, I use whatever works for, for the client. So that's, that's why I named the company that. And I think when you've, when you've been deep into it, like we have, how can you not apply those, those tools and things that you know that work, right? Um, and yet it's not an explicit lean engagement. It's not an explicit philosophical engagement. It's, it's all of the things. Um, let me show you one of the other things too that links right to what you're talking about, Toyanne. Um, so this is uh, the five pillars of Ikigai. Um, and these are just principles and things that, that we utilize to, to help people grasp it at a, at a deeper philosophical level. So to go beyond the bin. And I'll just, so one of them is be in the here and now. See if you see any lean stuff in here. Embrace starting small. Take joy in the little things. Seek harmony and balance and sustainability. And by sustainability, I don't mean in the, you know, like environmentally sustainable sense. It's, can you continue to do this? You know, what is it? And that's a direct linkage to, to lean, right? Um, and then finally, release yourself through self-acceptance. So uh, embracing that small, especially, I use that um, in, the, in the Kaizen principle, small incremental, excuse me, <clears throat> I get very emotional about Ikigai. Um, <clears throat> um, small incremental change to help people accept and to, and to grow into it and to, to learn it. So, um, so definitely a, a strong linkage to that and, and helping them see the other is um, a lot of times our discussions will start with a career conversation because that's when most people are reaching out. It's like, I want a career change. I want to do all this. And so you almost have to start with that kind of a process to even get them to invest in the reflection that will help lead them to the, uh, the self self-realization that comes with Ikigai on top of career work. Working with teams, individuals, teams, organizations, doing this types of coaching, have you had any major epiphanies? Wow. Um, probably the, the biggest is that uh, it, it just takes time, right? It takes, and if you think about, um, uh, well, I guess like anything, I mean, it, it, it's just narrowing down, right? You think you've got your, you think you've got your ikigai. You think you've got your improvement. You think you've got your transformation. And then you, you go to the next phase, you go, wow, we are so much further than we realized, you know, and there's so much more to go and you just, and it never gets to zero, right? That's the, that's the thing. And it's, it's so true of this, your understanding of it and, um, and application of it just keeps going, keep going deeper. Um, so that's probably the biggest revelation to me. There's no perfect process. There's no perfect individual. There's no, no. perfect. Excellent. Excellent. No, no, but you guys are like this. I, I, uh, I always, in almost any engagement, especially in this space, but lean or anything, I, I tell people, I want you to, I want you to commit to embracing something for me. And they'll say, what is it? Say, Be comfortable with, live into the phrase, it depends. <laughs> because everything, you know, depends, right? 
um, I've worked with some companies that um, they really wanted and they were serious about connecting their, their purpose and connecting it to their employees and all of that. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and they were very serious about it. And yet they couldn't deliver there are services right now in any kind of reasonable way. It's like, well, we got to get to that first, right? You're getting, you're, you know, you're getting kicked in the head every day because you're not delivering what you're committing to your customers. We may have to fix that before we can do a lot of deep dive purpose work, mm. you know? And so it does, it depends. Some, some companies or some people are at a point. Um, I'm working with a client right now who uh, was, was willing to explore the, the, reflection and, and ikigai at the beginning but thought it was a kind of a waste of time and then found herself out of work and is now like really trying to find something that's more meaningful and uh, our session just a, a few weeks ago she goes oh now I kind of get why I need to know my ikigai because she was looking at I don't know 10 different jobs and like why would you pick this one why would you pick that one and she's like oh so I should I should look for one that connects more to where I get fulfillment. It's like, yeah. <laughs> That's something that we've been struggling with with clients lately is um, the acceptance that reflection is not a waste of time because there's such a tendency to have a bias towards action, right? People want a pro they want an end product. And what is the end product of a reflection? Well, hopefully you learn something or hopefully an epiphany, but sometimes people don't credit the intangible, mm -hmm. especially now, you know, living in a, a COVID world, in a world where people are concerned with climate change and, you know, political crises and cultural and social conflict right now. Um, how, how are you finding people are gravitating more towards this sense of self-reflection right now to get a better sense of what really now what matters to me what my purpose it's now's the time now's the time for me to nail that are you finding that with your clients right now oh yeah yeah the 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 kind of hit upside the head that we've all gotten from from covid and just everything it's forced us to start examining and understanding that we need to examine well that's not just a muscle you just start using right you know you got to develop that and so that's where um, I'm finding people reaching out is they, they know they need it and they're not sure how to do it. Um, again, because it's not a muscle that they have, have strengthened or developed over time. Um, and that's a lot of the early work that I do too, is just even you can get in getting people to understand what does it mean to spend some time in self-reflection? What, what does that take? What does that, you know, again, mean, um, I have one client, he's like, man, I'm thinking all the time now. <laughs> I'm thinking all the time. And I said, why is that? And he goes, because I got so much I got to think about. I mean, you, you ask me a question and I'll, you know, I'll ask him a, a question to, to prompt it. And he goes, then I can't get it out of my head for a week until we talk again. It's like, great. That's good. <laughs> that, can be, that can be scary. Oh yeah. Right? Having yeah. all that time to reflect and, you know, reflecting on the things, on the epiphanies that you do have then what do you do? What do you do with them? And for a lot of people, that's scary because they're like, what if I get it wrong? Uh, and, and there's an infinite number of ways to get your life wrong. Right. <laughs> so, so and, and people are very skilled at it. So they're like, oh my God, I, I don't want to think about that. <laughs> right. to, to me, that's one of the freeing things too about the, the concept of Ikigai. Um, it's not a, it's not, it's not, should I be an accountant? Should I be a, a lean guy? Should I? It's deeper than that. And it's really, if you think about it, uh, Ikigai is there. And a lot of times we have a really good sense of it when we're young and then life happens, right? Disappointments and urgencies and jobs and kids and this and that. It gets covered up. And it really the process, some people ask about discovering. I say, no, it's more uncovering because it's there and it's you. And you can live into it by being the real and genuine you. So you can't screw it up. You can't be wrong. You can't, you know, have made this decision or that decision and it messed stuff up forever because it's really not about those things. It's about being you and living into that 
uh, fully and wholly as yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to, I have to thank you because over the past crazy year, while the world was burning, um, <laughs> a little admission, I would go on LinkedIn in the morning and I would read your latest post. Oh. It always gave me so much hope. And it always gave me something to think about throughout the course of the day and something that I could tweak and something that I could change. So I appreciate that. And um, I wanna make sure that all of our listeners know how to get in touch with you and where they can read your writing and look into your consulting. So if you would share that. Sure. The best place to get a hold of me is, is on LinkedIn. And uh, it's, it's David E. Marlowe. So uh, just my middle initial, uh, because there are surprisingly large number of other David Marlowe's. I don't know how that could be, but uh, uh, so that's the easiest way to get hold of me. And, and you can email me through that or DM me. The other would be uh, uh, email me at vluru1 at gmail. Okay, and we will make sure that we, we have that posted posted with this video. Thank you so much for joining us today. I learned a lot. Oh, it's been a pleasure. You guys are two of my favorite people. So. What's Perfect. that? I'm sorry? I just said, you guys are two of my favorite people. So this is a, a absolute pleasure for me.